Welcome back travelers to my YouTube channel. Today I am going to do my first ever home tour in Palea and I'm going to be touring my own. So I hope that you enjoy this cozy little tour of my Ghibli or Ghibli, however you choose to pronounce it, inspired home. For this tour, I'm actually using my secondary account. It's an account I use to restart the game so that I can answer questions for newer players and have that memory fresh. So she's just a base character, base clothes, nothing too fancy about her. But this way I can actually tour my home without going into editing mode and you get to see all the pretty details without that grid coming up. And I don't have to walk fast, I can walk slow. We start off the house tour with my entrance, which is inspired by the idea that I run a sort of apothecary in the game. So I'm using the cooking stall from Reth's skill to design a sort of stand that you can come up to and purchase potions and salves and things like that. And then you walk down this very whimsical forest path, very fey coated there's even this little nook that I'm working on. And if there were books I could use as decor, this would be covered in it. Papers, scrolls, just a cozy little corner for the Fae to read and tell their stories and the lore of their world. And of course, as you make your way down, you are going to come across my outhouse and my target practice station, which I designed specifically to make it look like a actual proper practice range. And who doesn't love an outhouse at the end of a mythical path? If you've got to go to the bathroom, you might as well make it whimsical, right? Beside this, I have my laundry station, which unfortunately, I don't have all the recipes from the choppa piles yet for the items I want to use for this. So it's kind of just a stand-in for now. This particular section is actually the least decorated, which is why I'm getting it done at the beginning of the video. This is where my silver wing is going to go once I actually get it, but because the quest is bugged right now, I don't have it. So the plushie from Zeki is a stand-in. And this is my bug house. I know a lot of people love to show off the fish that they catch and the bugs that they catch, I really wish that I could have the bugs out of their little terrariums, but because the game doesn't let me do it, I decided to put them all in this house and just pretend that they're roaming freely in their world. So there's a lot of fruit and vines, so to speak, all over this house to sort of imagine that if the bugs were free flying or free crawling, they would have things that they could eat things they could do, water that they could splash in and drink. So that's where the inspiration for this came from. I'm going to take you back down the path just to get a view of walking out from my plot, but we're actually going to move on to where my garden is now and the way more decorated sections of my home. I want to take you over my little pond and into the path to my home and to my garden. When I first started playing Palea, my initial immediate need was to make a garden that was absolutely cluttered with overgrown plants and items that were left out in the yard for, in my mind, mice and frogs to climb in and live in and find joy in. I have a love of using the item overlapping glitch to make things look a little bit like they wouldn't or a little bit better, so that's why I was showing off my frog because I put it into one of the little fountains so that the frog was getting water on him because I just think it's extra cute. This is by far the favorite angle of my house. I feel like it gives you the perfect aesthetic of what I'm going for. 
and it immediately goes into showcasing all of my garden clutter and everything I do has a purpose if you were role playing in the game. So I have my coat hanger in my garden and the story behind it is that the hat is for blocking the sun on sunny days and the towel that's hanging there is for when you work up a sweat when you're gardening. So everything is placed in a position where it would be functional if you were in fact living in the world of Balia. Don't mind the fact that my garden's not watered, I forgot about that. We're now moving into, I guess what I would call my workstation. I don't like the traditional idea of a workroom or a tent or anything like that, and you'll see that again later in the video. So this is just an extension of my garden and where I would make little things, like that's why my crafting benches are there and my glowworm farms. The whole idea with my house is that it's organically moving as possible. I want everything to feel as natural as possible and for you to move along the plot with a feeling of purpose regardless of where you're going. Mind you, this plot is not done and I don't think it will ever be done, so to speak, because S6 adds in so many updates all the time with new items and new things that you can use for decor that this will always be constantly changing but the inspiration is always going to be the same it's just going to get even better we're going to start walking to the other side of the house just to showcase one section of garden that i did and i wanted to leave this in because i love my front yard so much Mind you, my garden is in no way the best layout for any type of production experience or money, but it's pretty and that's the way that I like it. Over here I have my preserve jars. My actual profile account is sitting in that chair. And this is my pumpkin patch. Pumpkins are not actually in the game. So what I did is I used one garden patch with potatoes and then let the weeds grow. This helps with the illusion that this is actually a pumpkin patch. And this is my kitsu shrine. I decided because in the lore of the game, a kitsu is not a really companion to people. It's more of a wild creature that graces you with its presence. So I decided to make this beautiful shrine for it as a way to thank the kitsu for its offerings. And I decided to keep everything within the autumn color tone here, since the kitsu is primarily fire themed. I decided not to edit this part and just allow you to see my character move so that you could tell where this room was on my plot. But this room is very special to me. It's not accessible from inside the house. And it's completely inspired by my childlike wonder because I don't really like the color pink around me all the time but I do love the color pink. I don't know how to explain it but this is sort of letting my inner child run free and make a bedroom that she would have wanted and would even now I would want to stay in this room. So I like to call this my storybook fantasy inspired room. Stepping into it should feel like stepping into a world of whimsy and fairy tales. I even specifically use the picture on the wall that kind of looks like a cottage from a fairy tale and the some secret woods that are enchanted by fairies. It's supposed to overwhelm you with the feeling of whimsy and I hope that that came across. The next place I'm going to take you is a little less whimsical, depending on your thought of whimsy, but I don't like the idea of having my workstations all together in a tent because I think it'll burn down and the harvest house is just too big. So I made this little area inspired by the bellows in Princess Mononoke. And then we move on to the inside of the home, which is arguably 
my least favorite part and yet I still love it. And that's simply because the game doesn't allow me to have the dark forest greens that I would prefer to use for decor. The new wallpaper was game changing for me, but the game is still missing out on a lot of what I need for my specific design style. That didn't stop me, however, from doing everything I could to make this feel like my perfect Ghibli home, from the clutter to the bugs to the plants to even the sword on the wall, which is my favorite reward item from a friendship quest. I think my other favorite thing with this home is, and I am tooting my own horn, so to speak, is my ability to turn things into things they weren't meant to be. So for example, the picnic blanket is actually underneath where you would sort of come in and take your shoes off and where all the coats are kept to make it look like I was just out apple picking and this is my apple picking basket. So I'm really proud of myself for the way that I make things look and feel functional and actually do make things functional. My stove can be cooked on, yet there is a pot on top of it. And when you turn around, I actually have a prep station that is fully functional, which you'll see in just a moment here. Mind you, this character is brand new, so she has no recipes unlocked yet, but you get the point. And if the game would let me have more foraging baskets like that one, I would super appreciate it. This plant room is actually the first room that I ever made in Pelia, and I've remade it every time I've restarted a game because I was in a bunch of the alpha tests, I was in closed beta, so every time the accounts got reset for testing, I remade this room and added new items that had been entered into the game each time. I don't want to say I was the first person to use a hallway as a small room, but I really feel like I might have been the first person to use the hallway as a small room. And on the theme of wanting to make sure my house feels livable, I made sure to make things that aren't actually functional, functional. And all you have to do is hide items behind other items, chests behind cabinets, putting things on top of your stove or making a fully functional prep station. Moving on to the bedroom, what's so funny is that this is actually one of my community's favorite rooms in my home, but for me, it was the hardest to decorate. The items I want to use aesthetically, again, don't come in a color that I prefer. So designing this room to incorporate my love of dark greens and golds was really, really hard. And I finally got to a point where I'm comfortable with what it looks like. Now I'm just working towards getting more clutter. My bathroom is perfection, though I may change the colors around just a little bit, but the idea was to make it the most magical built-on bathroom I could ever have made. While I'm not 100% happy with my bedroom yet, it really does bring me joy and it will only get better. Moving on to my favorite room in the house, and I am going to spend a lot of time just showing you details of this room. I'm even going to just stand here for a moment and let you take it all in. This is my apothecary greenhouse potion making room. It is by far my most favorite space in the house. It is designed specifically to have themes in each corner of the space, from adventuring to plants and animals that would need sunlight for growth, to a more dark, wet, mossy, 
corner of the forest where mushrooms would grow and creepy crawlies would survive well all the way to the other corner which is specifically made to be where i would toss or wash containers that i messed up my apothecary doings in this room also even has its own mini little greenhouse room which is where I grow plants and I keep all of my scrolls and information that are important to creating elixirs. As I mentioned, I just want to show you the details in this room because it's absolutely my most proud space. So I hope that you have enjoyed just staring at it as much as I have enjoyed showing it to you. Next, we are going to make our way outside once again, and I am going to take you back into the corner where the outhouse was, but I'm actually going to walk you down into the forest. This is a lesser known secret of my plot, because when people do come explore here, they don't tend to walk away from the house because everything is cluttered in the center which was done on purpose. I wanted it to feel very wild. And by making it feel wild, what better way than putting wildlife out in the woods? And from a distance, you can't tell that those aren't real Cernuk, right? One of the things I want to do with my home is create little secrets everywhere that you go. And one that I just decided to start working on, and yes, all I've done is put boots on the ground, don't come for me, is an Arietti themed area. If you don't know what Arietti is, I highly recommend that you look it up. That has been my home plot tour in Palea, which has been Ghibli or Ghibli, however you choose to pronounce it inspired. The clutter of Howl's Moving Castle, the industrial mixed with nature from Princess Mononoke, Arietti hanging out in the background, and anything else I could think of that would make me feel like a character from those films. I hope it brought you a sense of joy, a sense of whimsy, and inspired you in your own home to know that you can build a fantastic home even in a small size. If you enjoyed the tour, feel free to like and maybe even subscribe, but most importantly, have a very magical day.